to get um, more students involved in a group situation. I, I rarely in tutor individually for economics. I think it's a lot more important that they're in a group. I think that they really contribute to each other's learning. Group tutoring is fantastic. It, it, um, I can't overemphasize the points of, of how much the student gets out of interacting with other students and, and bringing up questions that that student never even thought of or he did think he, he thought he did understand but as it turns out, they, they didn't really get the basics down. These experienced tutors obviously feel that their group tutorials are both productive and rewarding. If you haven't tutored groups of students before, or if productive and rewarding don't describe your past group sessions, you need to learn some of the strategies for effective group tutoring. The first of these is ensuring visibility. To do that, Arrange the seating so that you have a clear view of your students and can communicate with them easily. I always have a circle for group discussions, as far as that's possible in, in the little space we have. Um, in fact, when people latecomers come in, I stop the group, we shift around, we make room. I don't like anybody sitting on the periphery because that gives them the chance to be uninvolved, which I think they shouldn't have the chance. Or even if they want to be involved, it's harder for them to speak up. And also, I need to keep aware of them all. So I need to be able to see everybody equally. I don't like to have my back turned on one person. Of course, it's also important that your students be able to see what you are doing. Sometimes it's enough to simply turn your notes or drawings around. Suppose that I wanted to find the potential on a sphere, this potential of a sphere, and I put a charge Q on it. All right, so now I'm talking about I put a charge Q on the sphere, and I want to know what is the potential, not potential energy, but potential, potential difference at a point R away from the center of the sphere. Can you describe in words how I would go about solving the problem? If you don't feel satisfied with the initial arrangement of the group, try other possibilities. Rearranging positions makes seeing and using your notes easier for your students. You have a case like, I wish I was left-handed. I'm left-handed. <laughs> why don't you sit here and I'll sit here. Okay, I just, I can't do things. Mind? <laughs> Let's switch. I'm left-handed. Okay, well now we'll bump elbows. <laughs> I have a problem in class all the time. Oh, I know. Bumping elbows. Okay. We have another case when we have something like this, e to the x. When you have your students arranged for easy communication, the next step is to make that communication happen. Although students are often willing to let the tutor do all the talking, they'll learn more if everyone in the session participates. Many experienced tutors encourage participation by students of all skill levels by asking them to explain ideas to each other. OK, your question. Okay, let's look at this chart here. Yeah, I have that chart down too. <clears throat> Leonard, why don't you explain to Deva how you read this chart? Well, we're going to look at the whole thing. This is metazoa, which means multicellular animals. And the closeness between the two, close, you know, like we'll look at the chimpanzee and the gorilla, and the line is this short and this long. And then we might look at the gorilla and Orangutan, and because the line to chimpanzee is shorter, we might we might assume that the gorilla is clo closer related to chimpanzee than than to orangutan, and even a lot closer than let's say to prasimans, because the, you know, the distance is much greater. Okay. Although you might think that Noble is doing nothing, notice how he provides his students with subtle direction and approval. Why don't you point to those things? This yeah, is okay. prosimians, <coughs> which include lemurs, lorises, and tarsiers. And they include old new world monkeys and old world monkeys, which are right here. This is baboons, uh, old world monkeys. Mm -hmm. Baboons are monkeys. Yeah. 
Tutors who encourage students to explain course material to each other often discover that they soon learn to discuss ideas on their own. We'll let Elisa describe how this happens. Um, both of them have always come up with ideas. So what you have here is then a group of very well-prepared people who all have ideas, all read insightfully, and by now they know each other. And they're very easy about talking with each other. You notice they talk with each other as well as with me, because like now I'm not the center as much anymore as at the beginning of the quarter. To get that going in the beginning, um, I always feel a little bit artificial about it, but I look at each person, you know, and I, and I ask each person a question. If I'm asking a whole group a question, I, first I look at one, then I'll look at another one, then I'll look at another one. And I keep doing that as I ask questions. You know, I'll look at them like I expect an answer from you. <laughs> in each session with a group, you'll probably find that some students are quiet while others want to dominate the session. You can often reassure your quiet students by providing opportunities for them to contribute without being interrupted. Watch what happens to Roxanne's normally active participation when Elisa asks her a question, but doesn't provide her with a chance to answer. Okay, and what about arguing? Does, is she always arguing on something of great consequence? No. Mm -mm. I don't think so. Do you think some of those arguments are about? Can you remember any of them in particular? She argues about the um, the story. I mean, she always questions the story that that story that the dormouse told. Yeah, I was thinking Why? of the tea party. Elisa did not encourage Roxanne's participation, and as a result, Roxanne first became frustrated and then lost interest in the discussion. A crucial part of encouraging equal participation is controlling the dominant students. Sometimes these students will want to monopolize the session even when they aren't adequately prepared. Good tutors control such situations by firmly redirecting the discussion toward the students who are prepared. Okay, I'll tell you what, pull out the lecture notes and I'd like you to pick out those things you don't really understand where, where she's getting the interpretation. I'd like to discuss those things. I'm in a bind because I want to wait until Tracy comes back in, but I haven't remember I haven't read it, so that's where I'm out of bind. Okay, fine. Then but there's like things those yeah. that... that well, um, since you haven't read it, I'd like to take questions first from, from Roxanne, because okay. she's read it. But then, you know, save your questions. Because Roxanne's questions and um, her viewpoint on the novel, that, and uh, Tracy's also, that may answer your questions. In larger tutorial groups, you can often encourage participation by taking a vote in response to your questions. Russell follows up this strategy by asking his students the reasons for their votes. In this way, he can easily draw all students into the discussion. What's going to happen to the vapor pressure? It's going to go up. Okay, one person says it's going to go up. What do you think? If I start, let's say I, have, uh, I start adding salt to this water, what's going to happen to my vapor pressure to the water? It's going to go down. Okay, well, okay, I got one, one up and one down. We need a deciding down. vote here. I see it down. Down, okay. Would it, why do you think it would go down? Or why do you think it would go up? Because there's more pressure in the water, making them go all over the place. Okay, that's... What, why do you think it would go down? Because you're adding more substances so the the NACO would try to... Well, it's going to break up the, the water pressure. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. Okay. That's, that's one of the advantages of having a group, a large group, is that... There's usually at least one person who knows the answer to a given question. And you know, uh, one method I've devised is that when you have a large group, you take, take a vote. All right? So every person gets to put in their opinion. You know, it's like, I, like I'll ask uh, the girl sitting here, and I'll say, what, what does she think? And she'll say, yes. And I say, OK, is, is that a consensus? You know, I ask, go around and ask everybody else. And you know, I can tell them whether they're right or wrong after we tally everything up. But they, ha you know, they have to come up with an answer. And I always ask them why they came up with the particular answer that they did. When real differences of opinion occur between students, a tutor can often resolve them by summarizing and integrating the students' viewpoints. Such intervention also validates each person's contribution and encourages further involvement. Now, it's interesting, because you remember the tales as always being happy and good, okay? And you were saying that, that with the magician, you know, that you played, you think it was really important for the kids to feel what evil feels like, so that they can learn to make the distinction in the real world and protect themselves. 
Okay, so here you've got two very opposite sort of ideas. You know, you've got the idea that kids need to know about evil, they need to be protect, learn to protect themselves, and then the idea that maybe kids shouldn't be exposed to that. You know, so that's the kind of tales you've got. Because some, someone who provided your books for you thought you should have happy endings. Working with groups of students is an effective strategy for tutors in many different subjects. In this tape, we've shown you how experienced tutors manage group tutorials to make them productive and rewarding. Let's review these briefly. To ensure visibility for the group, arrange the seating so that you have a clear view of each student. You can also turn your notes or rearrange positions in the group so that your visual aids can be seen by all students. Encouraging group participation is not difficult if you know how. You can ask students to explain ideas to each other while you provide subtle direction. Experienced tutors also foster equal participation in their groups by both reassuring the quiet ones and controlling the dominant ones. For larger groups, taking a vote is a practical way of maintaining an atmosphere of equality and importance. And finally, summarizing ideas helps resolve differences and validates each student's contribution. Taking steps towards increasing visibility and encouraging participation can make your tutorial groups more productive for your students and more rewarding for you.